Good morning and welcome back to the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games. The sun is shining and the weather is sweet here in Carson, California. We are at the StubHub Center. I'm Chase Singham alongside Bill Grunther and we are getting ready to kick off event number 10, the Sprint Chipper. Your standings coming in to today's event. Rich Froning has reestablished himself at the top of the leaderboard with a 22-point lead over Jason Kalipa and Garrett Fisher. But look for Josh Bridges to make a run for that podium position this morning. You know, again, with this one, it's a full-out sprint. They only have a five-minute time cap on that. So we've seen some really long events and some really short events. This one is going to be four-time, 21 med ball GHC sit-ups. That's a 20-pound ball these guys are going to have to work with. 15 pounds uh, snatches, getting 165 pounds overhead, and then nine wall burpees. That's an event that we saw back to the 2010 final event um, in the games there. And so again, it's going to be fast, it's going to be furious, and let's see what these guys can do. As our athletes coming onto the field, let's kick it down to Roy McKernan down on the field of play. Yeah, guys, those first two elements everyone's familiar with, but no, some of them have never faced this wall. I'm 6'3", this thing's at least about six foot tall. I think some of the smaller athletes like your Zach Forrest, even with his military background, he's been over a wall before, might have some trouble. They'll hit the deck and go over, so it's kind of like a burpee with an enormous jump over the top. Even though there's only nine, I think these guys are going to gas out. We're going to see some people get stuck here on the wall. Thanks, Ro, and here are your athletes coming into this heat three. We have, or heat number one of three. We have athletes sitting in 31st through 44th place Bill, We had 44 athletes coming in this morning. We're making a cut to 30 after this event. This is a very, very important heat for these guys, especially guys like Kenny Leverich and, and Lucas Parker. They need to do well here to establish themselves into that, uh, that final heat, the last event of the day. Kenny Leverett sitting in 31st place right now very, the near, very narrow lead on the rest of the field. From 28th to 33rd place, only 20 points separate these guys right now. So we've got to understand, these guys are sitting on that bubble. A man on the bubble right here, Lucas Parker. He's been great. I love watching him out there perform. But again, what Lucas Parker and, right, and Kenny Leverett, both good at these really kind of weird events. Um, Lucas Parker did really well last year in the in the, uh, uh, the obstacle course, as did Kenny Leverett. So this may be an event that's really suited to them and helped get them into that final event. It's going to be a very fast event. The time cap only five minutes, one of the shortest time caps we've ever seen here at the CrossFit Games. As the men get ready and settled in to start event number 10, the Sprint Chipper. And we see that the GHC set us builds, not going to tax them too much. They've done hundreds of these in their training. The snatches, that's the weight we've seen at the third heaviest weight in the first open workout. These guys took very easy and short work of this. Yeah, you know what, this right here, it, most people can do the GHC sit-ups. The last time I saw an event like this was a skill event where they had to actually throw a six-pound medicine ball. This is 20. Again, it's going to be fast and furious. It shouldn't tax them too much. The race is going to be at the snatches. The race is going to be on. We're looking for a lot of speed here. Going to have to keep our eye on those bubble, bubble athletes. Twenty-one GHD med ball sit-ups. The ball must touch the floor and then reach up and touch the end of the GHD. Bill, this is the biggest range of motion we've seen for a nominal movement. You know, the GHD, it's deadly. It really wreaks havoc on your whole front, front abdominal section. What these guys have to do right here is really use their hip flexors. So you're going to see them drive their knees down to the floor. That's going to help and bring their hip flexors so it's not a straight abs. But you know what? When you do that, if you've done a lot of GHDs, you start to feel that pain in your quads. You don't think you should, but these guys all will. And after the onslaught of uh, activities that they've done up to this point, you know that their thighs are burning. It'll be interesting to see who comes off first. And it looks like it's West Pyatt followed by Kenneth Fletcher's and Zach Forrest. All the men are now off the GC. Sprint chipper indeed. We have 15 snatches at 165 pounds. You know they're all going to want to do touch and go. We're going to have to see if they can hold on after the volume of work up to this point. Now, a lot of the guys when we were doing the open workout when we had this event, they were breaking these into sets of five. Now, granted, there was a whole bunch of burpees that were involved in here, but I really don't expect to see a whole lot of athletes go 15 straight. The strategy is going to be how large of a chunk can you take to stay fresh 
enough to continue. I'm, I'm expecting to see most of these guys doing sets of five, maybe even sets of three to keep their breaths down to a minimum. Kenneth Lethbridge followed by Lucas Parker, your top two guys talking about coming into this event. They did very well in the obstacle course, and there you see something awesome about L actually hitting a full snatch. A full squat snatch, again, that's a lot of energy that you're wasting that you don't want to have to do, but look at the explosiveness of Lucas Parker. Now, Lucas Parker and Kenny Levin, you can see them both there on your screen, are very, very strong Olympic lifters. Snatches are great at And while Lucas Parker did exactly what he, need right, what he needed right there. And here comes Lucas Parker, bubble athlete, sitting in 32nd place, and Kenneth Leverage, they are side by side. They need to do well. We have two more heats of men after this. Your top 30 coming into this 10th event. You've got to do a Murphy and a jump over the wall. Seems Lucas having a little bit of trouble here. He may have gone out a little bit too hard on the snatch, and that's exactly where the hinge of this workout is. Blowing out your shoulders, using a lot of that explosive hip power, and then now you really need to do that first. It's not a big deal, but getting up over that wall, it's weird muscles that you haven't really used during the rest of the competition. Kenneth Leverance, Lucas Parker, both tied at four reps, but Daniel Tominski has now joined the party as the rest of the field slowly making their way over to the wall. It's just nine reps. Lucas Parker and Kenneth Leverage, with their tied up right now. Lucas Parker with a slight edge. When they're done, they're going to have to sprint across the field to the pad. And wow. Lucas wow. Parker. That's a great job by Lucas Parker. You know, he actually said, I'm really good at this quote unquote weird stuff. I'll change the word there just so we can have it on TV. And Kenny Leverage, you know, that's exactly who we were expecting to do well in this. Two very acrobatic guys, both blasted through that wall event. That was a great showing for both of those athletes. They needed that. Daniel Taminski trying to get in third by Orlando Trejo and Mike McGoldrick. They're all separated by a single rep. And it looks like Daniel Taminski will come in third right now at a time of 320. We have 90 seconds until we hit that five minute cap. We don't expect to see that to be an issue for both of these athletes. But Lucas Parker, 32nd place, coming into event number 10, the sprint chipper. This is what he needed to do. Absolutely, absolutely. You can see a lot of these athletes coming in now. One thing I was expecting to see, which I really didn't see as much as I thought, was going to be collisions on the wall. Start getting two athletes kicking their legs over. I thought we'd have some little bit of a foot to the face kind of activity, but it really didn't happen. Nothing like starting your day off with a foot to the face. Foot to the face. And how you doing? Welcome to the last day of CrossFit Games. We still have Ryan Swabity. He still has a few reps left to go. We have 45 seconds until that cap. He doesn't look to be in danger that he will finish. So all last week in heat number one of three will finish this sprint chipper for event number 10. That was an impressive, impressive times right there. Your top three in this heat, Lucas Parker, 252.8, followed by Kenneth Leverage and Daniel Taminski. We'll have to see how these times hold up and, and if they can move up into their lead. So the top 30 go. Well, the top 30 are up next, so heat number two is coming up. Your number one male for the sprint chipper. He came out strong and never looked back. The man with the beard, Lucas Parker. You know, again, Olympic lifting is great. He did exactly, he looked exactly how he did during the Olympic, or the uh, obstacle course last year at Pendleton. So fast over that wall, you know, it's a quick sprint. He moved furiously through that. That's exactly what he needed because he knows he needs to beat some of the people in the next heat. So here are your top, your results for heat number one. Lucas Parker taking the overall fall by Kenneth Leverts and Daniel Taminski. We'll have to see how those times hold up coming into this second heat. It's a close race between 28 to 33, Bill, so we'll have to see what these other guys need to perform now. It, it, you're absolutely right. What's crazy is the upcoming heats, you don't have any kind of slouchy athletes. Not, I mean, obviously these are all the best in the world, but you have some big names coming into that, into that next heat that these guys have to beat. So pressure is on. Hopefully that does well for him. Let's throw it down to Roy McKernan down with our Heat winner, Lucas Parker. Thanks, Chase. I've got uh, the Heat winner, Lucas Parker. Lucas, you're telling me about how this affected you. Let's tell the people at home, what did this workout feel like for you? Uh, it was it was pretty tough. I mean, the uh, the GHG setup is a bit of a bind. It doesn't like make you tired so much, but just uh, holding all that tension in your upper body with the ball and bending your spine back and forth a bunch of times, 
and then trying to go snatch accurately is pretty tough. Um, once you're done with the snatches, I got to the wall and I was kind of tired. I did one slow rep and I was like, shit, man, you only got like nine. Let's just go fast. So it's a good workout because it allows you to blitz through and it has a good component of athleticism to it. So I was looking forward to this one. Great. Now in the grand context of the weekend, you're sitting right on the bubble and you said you weren't feeling yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's something I'll have to assess and reflect on in the week or weeks to come. Um, I'm just, I just feel like I got no juice. Um, the only thing keeping me going this weekend has been the crowd. Like, I'm just so appreciative of, you know, every time my name comes up, they give me a big cheer and that, that's what keeps me going because I've been feeling kind of down this last, since the beginning of the game. So, looking to pick it up now. Well, we're all enjoying watching it. Thanks, Lucas. Thank you. Thanks, Ro. Lucas Parker might not have any juice, but he has an amazing beard and Christmas sweater for July. <laughs> you know what? And obviously the fans love it. He's right. He is a crowd favorite. People love seeing him out there, and he's just such a uh, – he is probably one of the most unique characters we have out on the field, no doubt. Your Heat 2 athletes slowly making their way on now. We've got the athletes sitting from 17th to 30th place. So these guys have been watching and seeing how these times stack up. Here's what he got ahead of a bill, the sprint chipper. A 21 med ball cleans again, just like Lucas was talking about. It's not hard. It's a 20-pound ball, 21 reps of that med ball sit up, 15 snatches at 165 pounds and nine wall burpees. Exactly what Lucas Parker was talking about, the attack to the front and then the attack to the back. These guys are under a lot of uh, time under tension, so it, it makes the wall harder than you think it would. It, it, it doesn't seem like it should be a big deal, but just like he said, it's tough. Your starting lineup for heat number two, event 10, the sprint chipper. Your fastest athletes will be in the middle. Athletes like Kyle Kasperbauer, Dan Bailey, even Roy Gamboa, that, that football background, you think he'll do well. I want to look at lane two, Asia Barto. He's a taller athlete. The wall shouldn't really be a problem for him. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think the wall will be an issue. And you know what the thing with Asia is, again, he's known for his insane snatch ability. So the snatch shouldn't be a problem. He has He's going to have to move the longest on the JC sit-ups, but I think the other components are going to are going to be in his wheelhouse. And he's got those long legs. He's going to be just, you know, trotting across the end at the, at the end of the race. Asia Barto on the left side of your screen. Dan Billy on the right. So your biggest and I think one of our smallest athletes in this heat. Asia Barto sitting in 29th place. So he's on that bubble. He knows. He saw Lucas Parker goes. He knows the time to beat. Lucas Parker did a lot of drops. I think Asia Bart is going to be able to handle a little bit of volume. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I think his numbers on the reps can be up a little bit higher. Uh, Dan Bailey, actually the world saw him do the 13.1 open workout, which included this segment of the snatch, the snatches, the snatch ladder, and the, uh, the burpees. So everyone knows exactly what he looks like when he's doing his snatches. Dan Bailey, two sixth place finishes back to back 2011 and 2012. But this man right here, second in the CrossFit Games last year, Matt Chan currently sitting in 25th overall. You know he wants to finish strong, definitely making the top 30, but definitely get back up in that top 10. You know, we were talking to Sheree a little earlier, and I asked him, I'm like, okay, is this, is this hard for Matt? And she's like, you know what, he's having a great time. He feels good. Just some unique events this year. Sprint chipper, 21 GHD sit-ups, and with Bill, the most beautiful med balls I have ever seen in my entire life. I absolutely knew the second I saw those that you'd fall in love with that Captain America and the red, white, and blue med balls there. Sometimes what you got to see is how they're moving this ball. They aren't keeping it up overhead. They're trying to bring the ball down to their stomach first, and then come up. So that lightens the load on their on their abs. But they want to try and bounce that ball off the ground to kind of give them a little bit of a, uh, of a shot coming up, too. Use whatever they can to their advantage. Asia Barto, the biggest athlete here at the CrossFit Games. And look at his GHD bill just rocking off the ground. That's a serious snap of those hip flexors. That's what I'm trying to tell all of our members of the gym. You drop those knees down, and that gets them up, snaps them up into that seated position. The field is now on to the 15 snatches at 165 pounds. So again, here's where the race is. What kind of rep scheme are you going to put yourself on underneath that bar? I don't expect to see a whole lot of squat snaps. We're going to see maybe some people spin their feet to the side. But are they going to go set to five, set to three? Or are they going to try to take a big chunk of ten? Asia Barto has yet to put the bar down. He was last to the snatches. He is staying hanging on, but it is Dan Bailey, your current leader next to him, Travis Mayer. They're about 11 reps. So a few more reps left to go. They'll then move their way back over to the wall for nine burpees over the wall. Well, the fact that Dan Bailey put the bar down with two reps left, he really hammered through those initial 
13. Hopefully that doesn't kill him too much for the wall, but there he goes, he's off. And Bailey first out of the snatches. Bailey is on the wall all by himself. He's one rep in. The next closest guy is in lane number 11, Aizen Takasaki. Well, Dad, look at how high he has to to jump. So again, small athlete. He's actually four to to jump over that wall with two taller athletes can pull himself up over. Judge's hand is in the air. He has a four reps left to go. Nakasaki in second with three. Holmberg and Barto has now made his way over the wall. Most athletes are now here. Dan Bailey, two reps left. The time to beat 22.52 or 22.52 set by Lucas Parker. Check out this move by Dan Bailey. He actually put his hand on that support every single rep. I think that's a pretty smart move on his part. Dan Bailey now setting the best time at two minutes and 30 seconds. Tyson Takasaki, he will come in second place. A great finish for him at 2.41, still ahead of Lucas Parkers' time. Now we have to keep our eye on those bubble athletes. Nico Rumpa. Asia Bartow sitting at 28th and 29th. And Nico and Rolfe, he's sprinting to the finish. Asia Bartow, we don't know what it is. And it looks like Rolfe takes fourth. Bartow will be fifth, just two tenths of a second separate each other. So Lucas Parker, that's a good position for him. Now we're trying to see who fills in those spaces between the athletes. Again, it's, it's tough when you're in those earlier heats because you, you don't have anyone to chase. You're truly chasing the clock because the rest of it is unknown. All you can do is do the best you can, but it looks like that was a great shot for Lucas. Again, these athletes, you get some big names in here. You have ex-champs in this heat. You have ex-podium you know, place winners in this heat. That's a tough thing to beat when you don't even know what they're going to be put up there. But um, all some great times on these athletes here as well. Simone Paquette and Brian Miller sprinting to the finish. We have one athlete left on the field, that's David Levy. David Levy has come from one of the smaller regions. He's been here the last uh, three years, and you know what? He, he, he's never had a real spectacular finish, but we've seen him do really, really well in this game. And, you know, the fact that he's improved every year, that's exactly what we want to see in the CrossFit community. Just CrossFit in general is improved fitness, and he's doing just that. David Levy now crossing the finish line well beneath that five-minute time cap. We haven't seen anyone have an issue with that. These guys under that time cap. Sprint chip receiving Asia Marta. Congratulations. Congratulations, competitors. He was sitting at 29. Your top three for this heat two, Dan Bailey comes out blazing at 230, followed by Tyson Takasaki and your 2010 champ, Graham Holmberg. Dan Bailey, one of the fastest and most explosive athletes in these CrossFit games, and he really put it on display right he, now. He did exactly what he needed to do. I mean, he flew through those snatches, the smallest unbroken set that I've seen so far. And even though he was short, got over that wall, but look, very smart. Oh, but you get a chance to see it. He would grab that railing on the way up to push himself over and to help himself down every single time. That was smart. Heat two results. Your top finisher, Dan Bailey at 2.30. That is a new time to beat with Tyson Takasaki, Graham Holmberg, both getting under Lucas's Parker time of 2.52. Up next, we will be coming up with the third and final heat of event number 10, the sprint chipper. Is Rich Froning going to stay on top of the, the leaderboard, or is Jason Galipa going to run him down? All that and more coming up next.
Welcome back to the soccer stadium at the Stuff Home Center in Carson, California for the third and final heat for the men of the Sprint Chipper. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Bill Grundler, and this is the 10th of 12 sport events here at the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games. The overall standings after nine events, it's Rich Froning on top of the leaderboard. Jason Kalipa, the man who was in that spot for much of this competition, now sits in second. And then Garrett Fisher hanging on to third, but there are plenty of men trying to chase him down who are well within striking distance. The sprint chipper, just three movements here. This one has gone extremely fast. It, you talk about sprint, they weren't lying. 21 med ball GHD sit-ups. That's using the 20-pound red, white, and blue medicine ball there. 15 snatches with 165 pounds overhead. Could be any kind of snatch. Just get it up over your head. And then nine wall ball burpees. Burpee first, jumping up over that wall. All has to be done under a five-minute time cap. We are going to see some blazing speeds. Fastest time so far is two minutes and 30 seconds, so it is quick. The Sea of Green from CrossFit Invictus on hand to cheer on their man, Josh Bridges, who occupies lane 11. He's won three of the last four events. In lane seven is Garrett Fisher. In lane 10, Ben Smith, two athletes who excel at these type of movements. What's great about this, this particular moment in the in CrossFit game is we have two very young athletes, one with a lot of experience in Ben Smith, and one without a lot of games experience, but a lot of experience competing with some big names. So right there, Ben Smith, he was one of the youngest competitors ever competing in the games. He's so experienced now because he's been here forever. Garrett Fisher, never been in the games before, but competes with some of the best in the world. These guys are battling for that third place. Ben Smith wants back on the podium. He wants up there again. Ben Smith trying to catch Garrett Fisher for that third spot on the podium. Scott Panchik, man out of Central East, he finished second in that region. Panchik in lane number five comes in in seventh place overall. He is another man who has a chance of making it to the podium. The third and final heat of the 10th of 12 sport events here at the 2013 CrossFit Games. The sprint chipper is underway. Dan Bailey has the time to beat at 2 minutes 30 seconds. 21 of these blue ham developer sit-ups. And it looks like an abdominal movement, but it really taxes the backside of your body as well. You know, if they're doing it correctly, just the fact of having to keep everything tight, you're using everything around your midsection. It's not just a nice little cruncher movement. They're going to just, you know, these guys, the 21 reps is not going to is going to obliterate them because they're used to doing so many. But this is a, a very difficult movement on your whole abs section. Add 20 pounds to it, have your hands overhead, just makes it even more demanding. And now here comes the mass exodus to the snatch. 15 reps at 165 pounds. It's dead even between all these athletes after the first movement. Again, this right here is where the race is going to be. How many reps are they going to go unbroken? How many times do they want to have to stop? These guys don't want to quit. I don't think you're going to see very many breaks in their in their uh, travel through that 15 reps. Just about every athlete within one or two reps of each other. The lead is going back and forth, but now Rich Broning, Jason Kaliba, and Z.A. Anderson have put about a one rep distance between themselves and the rest of the field. Broning is through 11, Kaliba's through 11. Again, Rich Broning, he looks, he makes everything look so easy. He's so relaxed. He takes the time to stop at the top. Every he resets, whereas Jason just kind of battles the whole way through. And Rich Broning is the first man to the wall. He has the overall lead, and he's being chased out by Jason Kalipa. Broning does not necessarily need to beat Dan Bailey. All he has to do is stay ahead of Jason Kalipa. Meanwhile, in lane 16, C.A. Anderson is to the wall, and now it's Broning, Anderson, and Kalipa, your top three athletes. Chad McKay, the man from Australia is there. Marcus Hendren is on the wall. Scott Pagic on the wall. Marcus Hendren is getting set to finish up the set of snatches. Look at the way that Rich Roy's moving over that wall. He's so smooth. He compared to Jason, it's more of a luggy movement. Again, he's so strong, but it's just not as clean. Probably with just a couple more reps to go. He already has the overall lead. Dan Bailey has the time. Jason Kaliba will finish second behind Z.A. Anderson, who actually beat him across the finish line on the far end of the field. So Z.A. Anderson in second, Kaliba in third. So Rich Froning widening his lead on Jason Kaliba, heading into the final two events here at the 2013 Reebok CrossFit 
games. Chad McKay is across. Scott Patrick and Neil Maddox coming across the finish line. So Rich Froning, as this competition continues to move along, just continues to get better. And this is his first victory of the competition. Yeah, it's so unbelievable when you say something like that. He's only won one event, but he just as the competition as the competition continues and goes longer and longer, he gets better and better. You can tell who trains with volume. And you know, again, as far as the fitness program, volume isn't necessarily the best thing for you, but as a comp as a competitor. To be in this competition, volume is imperative. Rich Roney first overall. Daniel Petro is still on the course, as is Jordan Troyan in lane number three. Now Troyan, the man who won the opening event of the 2013 Reebok Crossing Games, across the finish line, and that is Daniel Petro going through his final reps. Here comes Daniel Petro, closing out. The third and final heat of event 10, so just two more events to go, and those two men battling for the top spot, but Rich Froning in the headband has increased his lead on Jason Kaliba. Froning, the winning time, beat Dan Bailey by less than two seconds. Z.A. Anderson edging out Jason Kaliba for second. Again, Rich Froning, pretty much what we've discovered is this. You can throw anything at this kid and he will dominate. His only slightly Achilles heel is going to be something that's in water. So you get this kid on land anywhere and he is going to crush it. And this is the same pattern we saw last year in the 2012 Reebok CrossFit Games. Rich Froning saved his best performances for last. And when you look at the standings, he started winning events on the third day. The final results for event 10, the sprint chipper, Rich Froning. His first victory of the competition, he earns 100 points and $3,000 for the event win. Dan Bailey finished the second, and it's Z.A. Anderson in third. Amanda Kranz is with the event winner and overall leader. <laughs> All right, well, Rich is just saying, finally, finally. So that's obviously the sentiment that you're feeling right yeah. now. Yeah, happy. Uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a long, rough weekend so far. So finally get a W, finally. Uh, be on top of an event. It feels good. It feels good. Did you did you feel fresher, more fresh coming out to this this morning? No, no. This is uh, this is the hardest CrossFit Games I've been a part of. I've said that a few times. So definitely don't feel fresh, but uh, it was good to have that workout. Get one. What what are you thinking about looking ahead to the afternoon? Maintain, maintain. Uh, almost there. <laughs> almost home. You're close, Rich. Thank you. We're going back this day. Rich Froning setting himself up very nicely for his third straight CrossFit Games championship. He currently leads Jason Kalipa by 37 points. Garrett Fisher sits in third, Ben Smith in fourth. The men are done. Women coming up next. Lucas Parker set the early time to beat, but he got chased down by the champ at Dan Bailey. We'll be back with more live coverage from the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games next. Give it up one more time for your top three. 